this question that how to know if I am on the correct path? How to know if I am progressing? Am I going slow? Am I going fast? What are the signs of progress? Or whether I am facing any obstacles? What are those obstacles? And if I am on a suitable path or do I need to change it? And so on. These questions are there because the seeker is not able to judge his or her own progress. Usually the answer that is given is a kind answer which says that if your peace of mind, if your happiness, bliss and freedom goes on increasing, then you are on the right path. Then you are doing the right thing. Keep doing it. This is the general criteria and it is very good. It is good enough for many people. However, sometimes we are interested in knowing some specific things. That which I am cannot progress. That which I am is already the highest, the ultimate. So that which is progressing must be something else. And you must have guessed it that it is this creature, it is this machine that is progressing, it is evolving. The layers of the memory that have condensed into this structure, they are evolving, they have a direction. And that is what we mean by progress. It's not my progress. However, for the purpose of this talk, we are going to descend down into the illusion a bit and I am going to say progress of the seeker or your progress or my progress in a relative way. We are in the domain of relative truth here and we accept this progressive path that we are on, the path of evolution of this illusory structure. While completely knowing that I am whole and complete, I am blissful and I am perfect in every way. We are going to step down into the illusion and look at this illusory structure, how it evolves, how it progresses. And we are going to be very specific and we are going to go into a lot of detail here. So those who are not interested in this kind of hair spreading, they can surely skip the entire talk which will go on for a few episodes now. When we ascertain our progress, we call it self-evaluation, which is judgment of our own progress on a spiritual path. This can be a must for those who are on the progressive paths. Those who are on the direct path, as I said, depends on your interest. You can skip it because on the direct path, it will be a total waste of time. Why do we do the self-evaluation? To see how we are progressing, and to find out how fast we are progressing and to correct any errors because if we are not progressing there has to be some error or there has to be some obstacle there as we discussed in the last two episodes. And if we are not progressing we may decide to change our path, change the teacher, change the tradition etc. And you can see the obvious advantages here that a lot of time is saved if we evaluate our progress. It is an art and we are going to learn a few tricks here how to do the self-evaluation and the same thing can be used to evaluate others. We can use the same process to judge how others are progressing, what is their level of evolution and so on. Anyhow, we do it all the time instinctively. As soon as you encounter a person, there are built-in programs in us that start evaluating that person automatically. We judge them based on their behavior, what are they wearing, their clothes, their shoes, how they speak, what nationality, race, religion, caste they belong to, what is their education, what is their financial status, whether they are beautiful or ugly and so on. And we do it in split second. Humans are evolved to judge another very quickly. It has a survival advantage. Is this person my enemy or does he look like a friend? Is this person a suitable mate or not? And there were some experiments that were done. Some very interesting experiments. You can find them on net which uh, try to measure how fast we judge if the other person is a suitable partner for mating purposes. And they found that it takes just few seconds for the programs 
to arrive at a yes or no answer whether i am going to sleep with this person or not it takes few seconds and we are not even aware that that, that has happened now the decision has already happened and we simply obey it so evaluation of the other person happens automatically without our awareness there is no control over it but this can be done systematically and uh, consciously once you know yourself once you know how this structure works how this machine works you will be able to know all the people because they have something similar under the hood there are minor differences but most of the people are same actually once you know somebody so much you can manipulate them you can control them and you can misuse this ability to evaluate others you can check how evolved that person is and you can adjust your behavior or you you may decide to manipulate the other person so i need not tell you that this ability to evaluate the spiritual level or the level of evolution should not be misused you can use it on others but it is meant for your own evaluation and it should not be done on others only if they ask for it only if you have progressed enough so that you are getting interested seekers who are interested in knowing how you are progressing and how what can they do to become like you to progress as fast as you are progressing and there you can help them by telling them how to either how to self evaluate or you can do it by observing them for a long time you will come to know that every human has equal potential to evolve to progress however not everyone is at the same level this is bitter truth and people try to hide it under the, under the carpet you need not hide it you can accept it you can accept everybody as they are there is no need to be ashamed there is no need to be politically correct especially when you decide about your own life you decide about your life partners or friends or even your job the evaluation is very useful but it should not be used to discriminate people willy nilly that will be a misuse and that is stupidity i need not tell you that people have done this kind of social experiments and they ended up destroying the whole civilizations by discriminating people based on their level of evolution it does not matter how evolved one is everybody needs to be treated equally everybody needs to be treated equally i should repeat it so there are some warnings here that this method that we are going to discuss now may not be 100% accurate may not work on everybody because these mental structures are very complicated and they keep changing all the time in 24 hours they go through a cyclic change they go through a cyclic change yearly and there is a progression that happens on the time spans ranging from weeks to years to lifetimes so you may judge somebody today and you will find that after a week there are some changes probably he met somebody probably he read another book probably his blind beliefs were destroyed by a guru and so on he's a completely different person now or probably there was a death in his family or he fell in love married or somebody dumped him now he is he was a happy go lucky person now he is like a broken record so on so it keeps changing your uh, evaluation may not last yes there you can have a overall evaluation which does not change much throughout the lifetime and you will be able to diagnose problems in the other people and in yourself also and don't try to treat them you are not a psychotherapist so it is not a replacement of any kind of therapy or uh, treatment go and consult a specialist and if you think that you are not progressing go and consult your teacher before taking any big decisions these are the warnings now the question is how are you going to evaluate how are you going to measure your progress so we come up with a method the method is based on relative activity of the layers the more evolved the seeker is more balanced is the activity of the layers and the more evolved seekers they prefer the higher states now if you are wondering what is this activity what are these layers what states am i talking about that means you have skipped the previous episodes 
These things are discussed in detail in the previous episodes. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then it's best to go and watch them. Otherwise, whatever follows will be completely useless for you. It needs the basic spiritual knowledge before you start evaluating yourself or others. So notice that I am talking about relative activity. There is no absolute activity. There is no absolute measure of activity of a layer. You will need to find out which one is more or less active compared to other layers. That is what we are going to do. And of course, this measure is arbitrary and subjective. You can come up with your own measures. Probably you have something better than this. I am basing it on something which is very, very fundamental. It is all arbitrary and it is very general. Everybody is going to be unique, but you, you, we apply this general method, which we have chosen arbitrarily because I liked it. There is no other reason. There is no logic and rationality behind choosing this method, this measure. Now you will find that I'm going to talk about the lower layers and higher layers. And I'm going to declare somebody who is more evolved or less evolved, but you will find that all the layers are always active. Otherwise, the life is not possible. So, it does not matter how evolved you are, the lower layers are also active. It does not matter how lowly somebody is, the higher layers, they activate at some point or other, probably in sleep, who knows. But everybody has got these layers. I am not talking about anything hidden here. It is something which is very, very obvious. I am not talking about anything metaphysical at all. It is mostly common sense, which any intelligent person must be already aware of. They already have this knowledge. So when I say that these layers are lower and they are producing this kind of lowly activity and you find that, oh, I have this activity, I also do it, there's no need to be alarmed. Everybody has them. Everybody has all the layers. Otherwise, the structure will not be functional. Here is an animation of the layers. Notice that. So the whole 50, 60 or whatever number of layers there are have been grouped into seven groups. Very familiar groups. And you can see that they change in terms of activity throughout 24 hours. And they keep changing throughout the lifetime also. They change every year, every month and every week. This is just a demonstration. The thickness of the layer shows the amount of activity. And uh, this plot is not random. You can uh, pause the video and go in slow motion to check that these layers are being shown exactly in a way they change throughout the day for an average person. You can study this animation and you will learn a lot about the layers and their dynamics. And obviously, the more evolved a person is, the more balanced will be the activity and it will be kind of uniform most of the time. And because our tendency is to stay at the higher end, the lower activities will take up less time, but they will be active. We have chosen the measure and now we need to choose some parameters because the activity will show up in terms of expressions of various kinds. You cannot simply open the layered structure and start observing the activity. It is non-physical, non-mental, non-temporal, non-spatial. You know all these things. You cannot put a meter on it. You can only observe the expression of these activities. Unfortunately, it is possible because that is what is being expressed through the whole, this whole entity we call a human. How is this activity being expressed? And you will very logically see that the activity appears as behavior, it appears as speech and thought, and it appears in the character of the person. And it also appears in the form of afflictions or distortions, disorders of various kinds. So I have chosen six parameters here to measure the activity, relative activity of the layers. And they are the behavior, speech, thought, relations, means of entertainment of that person and mental afflictions. 
you could have added a few more like the condition of the body and the financial status of the person and so on but that makes it too complicated i have taken only the most important parameters here and the important thing here is that we should not guess these things we should not simply assume that this person ha- must be having that kind of behavior or we should not simply conclude from two words or the name of the person that what will be his thinking or what will be his relations like do not conclude from uh, stuff like the race or caste or uh, gender that will be stupidity always use your direct experience and logic study the person or in your case obviously you cannot use these uh, corrupted parameters that the society uses usually on yourself you cannot say that i belong to this community or this race or this language group and so i'll simply appoint myself at the highest level of evolution and my path is now finished my evolution is now complete obviously that will be completely useless so it has to be in direct experience and logic it cannot be a guesswork you should not judge people based on a single telephone call for example you need to see them in person you need to spend time with them at least spend few months and one year at least with them before you begin to evaluate anybody and obviously you should observe yourself for a long time before you arrive at some kind of conclusion about yourself and uh, the layers are many but we simply group them into seven types for uh, convenience you can group them into 10 types or 15 types it's your wish it is all arbitrary and subjective so let us start 